The Johnson government has hardly covered itself in roses since Boris became Prime Minister. But in one area at least, it's done exactly the right thing. In changing the May administration's narrow-minded attitude to foreign students studying in Britain by giving them longer visas after completing their university courses, it's recognised how important attractive foreign students is to this country, both economically and culturally. There are more than 400,000 foreign students studying in Britain, bringing in a massive £20 billion a year in foreign exchange. It is, in effect, a major export business. But it also has the advantage of selling the benefits of Britain to generations of overseas students, most of whom go back home enthusiastic about our country. And, of course, the fees they pay also allow our universities to expand and help pay for British students. That Mrs May couldn't see this tells you a lot about her limited view of the world and how obsessed she was about immigration figures. So, in this area alone, well done, Boris. Here, here, Greg. I, I'm here to completely endorse what you've said. As a former international student myself, as the third generation in my family on both sides, both my grandfathers, my mother, uh, all educated here in, in Britain, now my own children at British universities, um, this is great news. But before I make more of my argument, let's hear from Vivian Stern, the director of Universities UK International, and this is what she had to say. We've certainly seen some countries who have been effectively put off coming to study in the UK as a result of a slightly more uh, restrictive policy introduced um, in 2012. So places like uh, India particularly, we saw a halving of the number of Indian uh, students who chose to come and study in the UK. That's now going to bounce back and that will be great for us when you think about how important India is going to be in uh, this uh, coming century. So it's a really welcome change in direction and we're going to see the results of that I think quite quickly. The irony of all this is that in 2007, I actually spearheaded in the House of Lords with cross-party support the bringing in of the two-year post-graduation work visa and the government listened and it was brought in 2008 and then Theresa May when she was Home Secretary in 2012, it was removed and for seven years we've been crying out to the government, please bring this back. Why? Well, international students pay pretty huge fees and living expenses to be here. Those two years extra give them the opportunity to work, to get some work experience, to earn some money to help pay for their education. And while doing that, they're helping our companies and contributing to our economy. We have the lowest level of unemployment in over 40 years. And here we have international <coughs> students helping. They're the brightest, they're great, they're capable. The next thing is they're paying taxes, yeah. so they contribute to our exchequer. The next thing is they build the bridges that they've built through okay. being at university with by working over here and they go back to their countries as ambassadors for our country forever. And when they want to do business with any country afterwards, which country are they going to think of first? The UK. There are more world leaders right today as yeah. we speak, almost 60, who are educated at British universities along with American universities than any other countries in the world by far. So this is one of our strongest elements of soft power that we have. So this is not just a win-win situation, this is a win-win-win situation. I think you've made the point. Okay. On face value, it sounds like great news. The brightest and the best from around the world come here. They study, they work, they stay on, they enrich our country and our culture. Um, but I have a couple of reservations. One, there is no cap on the numbers who can come here. So, so how, where are all these graduates going to live? Now, and the thing, and you were talking about Mrs May's move before, Migration Watch have already pointed out, they, they are saying that this is a retrograde step and it's likely to lead to the situation we had before where students were coming here pretending to study, enrolling in an institution and not studying, going to work stacking shelves in Sainsbury's. So, so, that, no, so, what, so what I think has to be done is that study visa can't be used as a backdoor route to, to mess up register controls. And, and, and the thing is, universities, the, the applications of foreign students to universities is at record levels at the moment. And, and so, so what Migration Watch are saying is why, why devalue a study visa? We've got stacks. The they, they would make it, if you, yeah. but I want to just the, counteract very quickly, if I may. Of course. This is absolute nonsense. What's Do you nonsense? know we are competing, Migration Watch's argument, we're competing oh, with oh. the rest of the world. The Migration Advisory Committee, commissioned by the Home Office themselves, said in their report the number one reason that 
foreign students do not choose the UK as the number one choice. It's a lack of post-study work opportunities. You get two can or three I, years in Canada. Can I what? just read in out? Australia. Because, because, no, what, what, in New Zealand. What we should be saying is, when, when I was, I just, if you're Chancellor of Birmingham, I was Chancellor at the University of York for 11 years. And in my graduation speeches at the end, in the last few years, I used to thank... I do that. I used to I thank yes. the foreign students for yeah. choosing to come to Britain and choosing to come to yes, Europe. I, do that. This is I a, mean, this, this, is, this is a win-win. And yet here we were, and yet I felt that they were thought, well, we're here under, you know, we're here under pressure from government that doesn't really want us. I'm going to be really brief because I think I totally agree with you. I think this, and you, I think this is a great British success story. I hear your reservations. I'm, I'm sorry I discount them. But actually, there's someone we should be talking about this which is related to you, so I'm going to... In fact, it's your brother, Joe Johnson, who made this like yeah. a personal yes. crusade. Yes. Was, all right, yes, I'm mean, credit he, to him. He, Why did he feel it so he, keenly? Well, he, he tried to persuade... When he was head, number, head of number 10 policy unit, he tried to persuade Theresa May in the, the Home Office that it was absolutely insane to have students in the net immigration figures and they should be removed because, you know, they, sure. they are an absolute... We've talked about what a win-win-win they are. Plus, they pay up to £60,000 in fees, whereas UK students pay 9000 So, you know, on every score, it's a tick. But and, usually... and but she dug in because yeah. okay. the, it became an article of faith that uh, immigration had to be reduced to tens of thousands, and it was she felt it was so a you win taking her, so them out. So, so in so fact, it was a fail. You mentioned her. Let's let's hear what she says. She says it has become very apparent that the old student visa regime failed to control immigration. The changes refocused the student route as a temporary one, available only to the brightest and the best. The new system is designed to ensure students come for a limited period to study, not to work, and make. A positive contribution while they are here. You know, we know why she did what she did because it was be that, that that system, the previous system, was being abused. Car, can I just say that the, there was a stage when there were a whole load of bogus colleges. Yep. They were all shut they down. Were, yeah. That's criminality. But this yeah. is does not apply to our universities. And you know what? After she said this, no, after she that. said this, they did an analysis just within the last two years. And they found that less than 5,000, less than 5,000, not 100,000 a year, international students overstay. The vast majority go back to their countries or get a proper job over here. So there is, this is a complete misnomer. And if you poll the public, the public overwhelmingly have no objection to international students no, staying on and no. working after their studies. But, this but is it good was for abused, our country. And, and, I, and I, think, I think your brother's policy sort of... Um, advocates the fact that the, there is a way of checking what the students are doing. They have to be, they're going to be checked on to make sure they are studying in proper institutions, which I think is fair. But surely the, the real problem was that the government had committed itself to reducing immigration and continued to keep foreign students in the immigration yeah. figures. If there was no one in the cabinet supporting it, apart from Mrs May. And right. now the government wants to remove this net migration target, which is absolutely ludicrous. They've never yeah. hit it. And I want to say thank you to your brother Joe, and I want to say I thank you to your brother Bob Boris on this count. <laughs> well done to the government. It's been a All good right. day for the Johnson brothers.